Today we're going to be talking about Botox. Well, Botox and Dysport, which is a newer form of Botox that is a competitor to it. In our office, we do both Botox and Dysport, and there's even Xeomin as well. Botox, Dysport, and Xeomin come in a tiny vial, and we add material to reconstitute it. Now, it's important to know that because when you go to a doctor's office, you have to realize that they have to take this crystalline powder that is on the bottom of this and reconstitute it. That means that you can have various dilutions of it. So what comes in this syringe here may be diluted out a little bit more from office to office. That's normal, but it also means that there is a difference sometimes between what is in one person's syringe and another person's syringe. So this is Botox, and that's what we're going to be using on our uh, patient Chelsea today. And that's something that we uh, do on people every day. There have been over 9 million Botox injections since it's come out in 2002 and counting. So what we're going to be doing today is after a process where we've actually taken Chelsea and gone through the process of explaining to her what can and can't be done. So first of all, in that process, we do pictures on Chelsea so that she can have a record of what she looked like before and actually after she can see the pictures and see how she's improved. Now the other thing that we do is we do a consultation with our, with our patients. So each patient has the opportunity to look at themselves with us and analyze whether they have improvements that are uh, better done in the forehead area or the crow's feet area or, or whatnot. And that allows us the opportunity to tell them what we think our objectives, objectives would be and match them to their objectives. Now after that, we do the actual procedure if they choose to go ahead with it. So let's move to the actual procedure. What I'm doing right now is to get the uh, syringe so that the Botox, which is what we're using on Chelsea, is right at the top of the uh, syringe. There's always a little bit of a uh, potential space with air in it that occurs in a syringe when we uh, reconstitute it and put it into that syringe. So now it's at the top of the syringe. Now, Chelsea has been prepared. We normally do either uh, Hippoclins or some other cleanser for patients, depending on what they're allergic to, to clean off their face. We generally don't use alcohol because alcohol can uh, actually inactivate the, bo the Botox uh, to some degree or Dysport to some degree. So now what we do is now that, Chel that Chelsea is here and ready, Chelsea, can you raise your f eyebrows and can you frown for us? And so I want to see exactly where Chelsea's frown muscles are. Frown again, if you would. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to inject here. If you can keep on frowning, one, two, three. I always like to give my patients a little bit of uh, fair warning that they're going to have an injection. And we're injecting in a couple places here. Raise again. And you can see her frown doesn't go very high. Now frown again. And... I have Cassie right here, who's my assistant, and she's here just in case there is a little bit of uh, bleeding. We can go ahead and put pressure on it, and that's nice because it keeps uh, uh, Chelsea from having any bruising. That's the very last injection here. We'll put a little bit of pressure on there, and here we go. And we're done with it. How was that, Chelsea? Oh, that was great. Well, thank you. Well, thank you very much. It was great working with you today, and we'll see how Chelsea turns out in about five days.